Hello world, and we are back. My name's Kyle Fischel, and this is gonna be episode 88 of my poker blog. And today I'm gonna to cover a session that occurred a few weeks ago for my trip to Vegas, a 2-5 no limit session from the Aria, 1,000 max buy-in. But before I get into that, quick announcement, I'll be back at Jacksonville playing on the live stream July 14th and 15th. So if you'd like to see me play live, definitely tune in and check that out. And with that said, let's roll the tape. Come on, Harry, we've got a game to win. All right, first interesting hand. It folds to me in middle position. I have king jack offsuit. I raise to $20. Well, the small blind is the only caller. So we're going heads up to a flop of king eight three rainbow. Now this is an interesting hand because the small blind decides to lead out for $35. Nearly pot sized bets, a dry unconnected board and a board where I have top pair decent kicker. So not really sure how often the small blind can really have king, queen, or ace, king here. I suppose pocket eights and pocket threes are possible some of the time, but would you really bet so big on the flop with those hands? I don't really think so. I probably have the best hand here a majority of the time I make the call. When the turn is the ace of diamonds, that doesn't slow my opponent down at all. He bets $75. At this point, I'm not quite sure what hand would play exactly this way. I guess the sets are still possible and I'm not really gonna fold just yet. I still like the strength of my hand and my position gives me a lot of playability at the river. So I'm gonna make the call this street as well. When the river is the 10 of spades, my opponent checks to me. Now a jack is kind of relevant here as it reduces the chances my opponent could have queen jack, although he nearly never checks the river, rivering the nuts, but I could theoretically still have queen jack. My hand does have a decent amount of showdown value, but I think a hand that would play this way now is like ace five, ace six, some kind of ace wheel card that just bluff lead flop value bet turn and now is just being a little conservative on the river even though i have shot on value i'm definitely going to turn my hand into a bluff to get exactly an ace no kicker to fold i bet 210 dollars well my opponent actually takes a decent amount of time to think it over before he eventually makes the call with ace queen off suit i suppose he got the absolute max on this hand so cheers to that guy he's not relaxing is he Next hand of note. An under the gun player raises to $20. There is one caller. I'm in the small blind with king queen off suit. I decide to make the call as well. So we're going three ways to a flop of king jack six rainbow. The under the gun player does not slow down. He bets $40. The middle position player folds and when it's on to me, flopping top pair. Never really gonna fold flopping top pair, good kicker. I make the call. The turn is another jack. It's a pretty bad card, honestly, because one of the hands I'm hoping my opponent could have is like ace jack, and that just beats me. Additionally, it'll slow down hands like queen 10 and ace queen, things like that, who probably aren't going to feel comfortable to bet twice when I probably have a nut advantage over them. But either way, I checked my opponent. He checks it back. The river is the eight of diamonds. I checked my opponent again, prepared to check call, and he checks it back with pocket aces. Not the greatest start, but I believe we can come back from this. Next hand of note. With one limp, the cutoff raises to $20. I'm on the button with pocket nines. I make the call. Both blinds call and the limper called as well. So we're going four ways to a flop of 10-6 deuce. Having only one over card to nines is pretty good, especially as a 10 shouldn't connect with too many players range. Uh, any face card would probably be worse for me than just a 10 high board. So when it checks to me, I think I can take this down a good percentage of the time with a nearly pot size fully protection bet. I could have all the tens here. A nine is kind of a bluff, but either way, we want to deny equity from any over cards my opponents may hold. So I bet $90. Well, the small blind raises to $225. And then it folds back to me. Uh, Pretty much one of the worst situations that could happen to me. My opponent here could have a pretty balanced range here. My opponent could have all the club draws. He could have ace 10 off suit. He could have 10 jack suited of clubs where he's pretty much got me crushed. 
as this bet was just meant to take it down now, I suppose it's pretty weak, but I just fold facing a, a check raise from this opponent. But we'll make a note of it. This specific player is willing to throw the money around. Taking a mental note of that to use in the future has its own value. Welcome to the future. In this hand, I raise to $20 with pocket kings in middle position. The opponent from the last hand, three bets to $60. And then it folds back to me. Knowing this is a person who is willing to put money in the middle, I'm going to four bet and four bet to what I think is a number that can get me stacks in the middle pretty easily by the river. I make it $175 and my opponent makes the call pretty quickly. So we're just praying to not see an ace on that board. And queen eight, three, two diamonds is about as good as you can hope for when you play pocket kings. Although it is queen high, if my opponent has pocket queens, he's just gonna get all my money. So I'm gonna start with a down bet, a very slight down bet. I bet $150 and my opponent instantly ships it all in. Well, I'm only losing a pocket queens as he should have five bet ripped aces. And I guess I hope you have ace queen or some variety of diamonds because I can't really fold kings here. So I called the all in. And if somehow I wasn't good, I also river a king, which is a nice feeling. But my opponent claims that he had ace queen. So story checks out, we get a full double up and we have finally reached profit in this session. Yeah, I'm still here. Next hand of note. With one limp, I'm in late position with pocket eights. I raise to $15. The limper is the only caller, so we are heads up to a flop of queen eight deuce rainbow. So the board is really, really dry, but we have a set. We have to try to build a pot. Hopefully he has a queen or something that could pay us off. But we're gonna start with a very small down bet of $10. Thankfully, my opponent calls. The turn is a deuce of clubs, so we fill up instantly. I think this card is pretty good. My opponent could have a two, not very often, but he could. I can never really have a two, so a second barrel has merit. Additionally, a queen with no kicker may feel happier to continue knowing their kicker might not play if there's a dicey over card. So we're gonna go bigger, closer to a pot size bet on the turn. We bet $30. My opponent calls, very happy to see that. Ace of diamonds on the river is not the greatest card. If I'm hoping my opponent had a queen X, he's not very likely to pay off a bet when an, an over card hits like that. But thinking that some of the time I'll have missed clubs here, I could have jack 10, 10, 9. I could have so many bluffs in this spot that rips it three times and uses the ace as a bluff card that I think I have to go pretty polar when I have a almost nutted hand at the river like this. So I bet one single black chip worth 100 US dollars and my opponent makes the call happy to get that one. It's not easy to get three streets of value with a hand and somehow we got it with this one. So we'll take it. And the stack is a little bit bigger. Next interesting hand. There's a $10 straddle and two limpers to me. I'm in the small blind with pocket jacks, not gonna just limp. Could win right now with a raise, which would be a fine result. Otherwise, we'll play a bigger pot with a relative premium. I raise to $60. Well, only the straddler calls, so we're heads up to a flop of 976 rainbow. Having an overpair is pretty good. On this board specifically, I don't think it functions that great. I think this board is much better for my opponent than it is for me. He has all the two pair combinations and definitely more likely to have a straight than me. So even though I have an overpair and it could possibly need some protection, I'm definitely gonna include this into one of the stronger hands I have in my checking range. So I check, my opponent checks back pretty decent result. When the turn is the five of hearts, I'm gonna bet small on this one. One, I wanna control the betting lead. I don't really expect my opponent to raise too often because the only additional straight that I got there is three, four, and I doubt he called 60 with that. So I'm gonna bet this one for value. I can call by like a, like a nine, 10, 10, seven, 
maybe 10 jack type hand, something like that. So I bet $40. My opponent makes the call. When the river's the 10 of spades, that's also a pretty bad one. A lot of two pair combinations that I was hoping he could have just got there. But luckily I kept the pot small and manageable. So I could call a okay sized river bet, depending on the size of my opponent chose if he chooses to bet this. But I don't really know too many two pair combinations at the river that can value bet. They're pretty much turning their hand into a bluff at that point. And he had all the opportunity in the world to raise if he ever had an eight. So I should have the best hand here most of the time. When I check, my opponent just snap checks it back. I just show, believing I'm good. And uh, we are, we win that one too. It's a nice one. Next hand of note. With one limp, the player from the king's hand moved position, so he's actually sitting over in the late position seat. He raises to $20. I'm in the small blind with ace king. I'm definitely gonna three bet this one. Could win right now, which would be an okay result, but if not, we wanna build the size of the pot when we have premiums, so I bet $80. The late position player is the only caller, so we're heads up to a flop of ace, seven, six, two hearts. Excellent board for me. Definitely happy ace high. Some draws out there, but shouldn't be too worried as it is a three bet pot. So I'll go for a down bet right now as I think I should have with my entire range, including kings, queens, and sometimes jacks on this board. So definitely gonna do it when I have ace king. So I bet $50, my opponent calls. When the turn is the nine of clubs, brings a second flush draw on board. I think I definitely have to size up here a bit. Need to charge flush draws to continue and also, I can still get value from ace, queen, ace, jack, ace, 10, things like that. So on this card, I bet $135. My opponent calls pretty quickly, and when the river is the 10 of spades, puts a four liner out there pretty bad. I'm gonna check to him. Hopefully it goes check, check, and we just see a river. But my opponent gathers a pretty hefty bet. He bets $375. Can we bet it now? Now, as it's a three bet pot, my opponent should never really have an eight here. He was a pre-flop aggressor who called a three bet, so I'd say an eight is very, very unlikely. The only two pair that he should really have is ace 10. Ace 10 is possible, and I've seen this opponent throw the money around pretty heavily with just one pair type hands. So I think he could be valuing himself with just ace, queen, ace, jack, and sometimes having ace 10, as well as the fact that my opponent could be turning king queen king jack of hearts or clubs into a bluff with enough combinations of bluffs as well as missed value and only a few combinations of hands that beat me i think this is a hand i'm pretty forced to call on especially as i'm pretty much at the top of my range so i make the call and on this hand my opponent had seven eight of diamonds he had one of those eights that i kind of ruled out pretty early and we are back to about even on the session but a final hand of note. A button raises to $15. I'm on the small blind with ace queen offsuit. I'm gonna three bet this one to $45. Should have the best hand here as the button range is really, really wide and I'm probably gonna just win this pre-flop most of the time. On this hand, he decides to call and on a flop of ace, four, six, two clubs, I'm gonna include this hand specifically into another check calling hand. You don't wanna just bet every time you have a hand, you wanna have some strong hands in your checking range. I check, my opponent checks back. I'm prepared to go for some value on pretty much any turn. The nine of clubs is a turn where I think I'm kind of handcuffed to just check call down now. Even though I have the queen of clubs, it's just such a connected board that if I bet and get raised, I pretty much have to fold almost all the time. And he could fold with as weak as ace, deuce, ace of clubs. I'm gonna check call this one, I check. My opponent bets $35. Pretty easy call. Thankfully, he kept it relatively small. When the river is the five of spades, another very connected card. I think I just have to check call again. I check. This time, my opponent checks back. He has ace jack off suit. So queen kicker is definitely going to play and take us down a okay size pot to put us back to profit to end this session. For this Aria 2-5, 1,000 max buy-in, we are into the game for $1,000, out of the game for 1,354. Across five hours equates to $70 an hour or 14 big blinds an hour. All right, if you watched all the way at this point, thank you, I appreciate it. Please consider subscribing to my channel. It helps me out a great deal and there'll be more to come next week. Thank you.